We're going to start off using a workflow I've already created, editing the transition, and we're going to add a validator function, um, a device 42 custom field validator, and we're going to do that against a subnet. The rest of the parameters are just to limit what can be put in the field, so we're requiring exactly one subnet be put. And next, we're going to go ahead and add a post function. That'll be the device 42 automation function and we're going to require input from the device 42 subnet field for that function. Next we're going to edit our project. We're going to add a workflow. We're going to add an existing workflow and that'll be the workflow we just finished, the new server workflow. We'll associate issue types with that workflow and for this one we're only going to do the new server instance to that workflow. We go ahead and publish and then the next thing that happens is we have to migrate any issues that exist and since these are all test issues I'm just going to hit next on all this. Next up we add a brand new screen for our workflow and we call it the new server integration screen and uh, we configure that screen and configure it to use the device or to show the device for to subnet field and the summary and everything else we want to see and then we order the issues because we're creating the screen from scratch. We next jump over to screen schemes and we actually add the screen we just created to a new screen scheme. So we choose the new server integration screen and there we go we add that scheme. You can start to see why configuring Jira is a full-time job. So now we go to issue type screen schemes. We actually edit or configure, excuse me, the one we're using. And we associate the issue type or an issue type with the screen scheme we just created. So we choose the new server instance issue type and we're going to associate that with the screen scheme we just created, new server screen scheme. We're going to hit add. Back to the main screen. Let's create some issues to try all this configuration out. And you'll notice the screen flip to our custom screen when we change the issue type. So we'll go ahead and create a task. Then we'll go ahead and we'll create a second issue. Uh, this time we'll do a new server instance. We'll go ahead and create that ticket. And we'll leave the device 42 subnet field blank for now. So we'll take a quick diversion to add a filter to the device 42 subnet custom field. Uh, we'll do that in project administration, device 42 filters, and we'll select that custom field. And under subnet, we'll, or general settings, excuse me, we'll deselect everything but subnets and we'll hit OK. We'll head back over to the ticket and we'll edit it. And uh, now looking at the custom field, all you see is subnet. As expected, attempting to approve right now triggers the validation error because we said there had to be exactly one subnet in the field. So now let's go ahead and choose a subnet and meet our validation conditions and then approve again. As this completes, we should see the IP supplied by the device 42 post function in the comments. So there's that first IP right in the comments and then we'll go ahead and reopen the issue and we'll actually request a second IP from device 42. Now finally we're going to demonstrate the difference between a condition and a validator by removing the validator and replacing it with a conditional function. So we go in and edit that workflow, we delete the validator function, and we actually replace it with a condition. So we're going to add that condition right now, it's going to be a device 42 custom field condition. Just like before, all the uh, parameters are the same as the validator. Uh, we'll go ahead and demonstrate that difference right as we add that. So we'll publish the changes we don't need to back it up so now we head back to the issue we refresh the screen and we'll notice that the button's gone there's no more approve button there why is that so we jump back into the ticket we edit it we realize we don't have a subnet and we're not meeting our condition we add the subnet back we save and lo and behold look the button is back and just the same we add a second subnet and we don't meet the condition it disappears yet again